Could you put your microphone on? Yeah. Okay. That, Thank that you. That is important too. Yes. Um, so, honestly, um, if you have like, you help the teacher do it. Yes. Yes. So you're hired. Good. That's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So. <clears throat> uh, let's begin. We'll start with the seven line prayer. Om Lord Gan Yogi Nu Chang Shang Ema Gesar Dang Bola Yad Sen Choji Nyo Drubni Ema Jungne Shesu To Shakyamuni Buddha, teacher, sure. foe destroyer, thus gone, holy and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, 
glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, O destroyer, thus gone, holy and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, O destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, O destroyer, thus gone, holy and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, O destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold. To you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, feel devotion like merits and good qualities. To the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from, from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, <clears throat> teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bound with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing, and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in a community be free from the one that's some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since the beginning of this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn to the Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen, and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my idams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. The Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra, Arya Bhagavati Prajnaparamita Hriyadaya Sutra. 
I prostrate to the Arya triple gem. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on mass of vultures mountain on Rajagriya, together with the great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors of consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on and up to, including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on and up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, also no non-attainment. Shari Puja. Therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell on the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Bayate gate gate paragate parasangate bodhisoha. Say that mantra 20 times silent. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated, even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharideva Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. To fulfill the needs of all beings at their various levels of understanding, we request that you turn the wheel of Dharma including the lesser and greater common and extraordinary approaches.
Maybe I have some space for some flowers, let's see. Yeah, that's okay, isn't it? Yeah. I think I know everyone here. Do I know everyone? So today, uh, speak a little bit about Kala Chakra. <clears throat> How many people um, will be here uh, the audience now in, in person on Saturday 3rd? <clears throat> the room will fill up pretty fast today, <laughs> but we want it full. <clears throat> And also, we're going to have some people in the dojo too. Yeah. And then we want uh, thousands uh, online, okay? <laughs> so uh, we're practicing intensely so that we um, have uh, uninterrupted uh, video transmission, right? <clears throat> For people that are listening uh, remotely, uh, I do want comments like, I can, you know, can you hear okay? Can you see okay? Can we improve lighting? Or can you improve, can you improve your <laughs> lighting from your side? Or can you improve um, transmission from your side? It, it's a very interdependent phenomena, isn't it? Like that. I am, We've invested a lot, not as much as um, a TV station, but I feel like we're a little bit TV station. So uh, we need everyone's feedback and we're getting help. Um, Autumn, Connor, Eli, right? And then um, my friend, our friend Clement uh, and uh, his uh, tech guy Ray are coming tomorrow, like that. Um, <clears throat> I would need feedback, you know, from everybody. How's it going, right? Or even just the uh, um, sound in here. Like, <clears throat> I'm sure the Buddha even have the Buddha have, uh, like, um, <clears throat> IT issues. <laughs> sure. Like, uh, like how do they like how do they talk to really large crowds, right? They kind of didn't have a huge voice, so uh, people have speculated about that. Of course, the, the Buddha's voice was uh, magical, so everyone could hear. But um, uh, you know, my guess is they they had to do it the way they did it in. Uh, Sometimes in Greece, you know, like um, the, the first 20 feet would hear it and then they'd say it to the next 20 feet and it would go like that, right? Um, so we just kind of have this kind of ripple effect and then um, people would get together after the talk um, and uh, you know, basically like repeat it and memorize it. So uh, that's, that's how they did it. <clears throat> so the point is we still have, even though we have you know, recording devices, books, so forth, we still have uh, the need for um, oral transmission, right? <clears throat> I'm gonna try to remind people or now or somebody, maybe it shouldn't be me, but we'll turn off our cell phones. So that means we have to depend upon the IT people to record it, right? <laughs> it's a problem in, in monasteries too. You know, everyone has a mobile phone. Say in India, 
so I'm going off to <clears throat> if it's necessary, but we can uh, pretend like we have to know each other and we have to listen. So if somebody said, what did the Lama say? What did Ramshay say? What did the Buddha say? We could actually repeat it to them. So you want to be listening from that point of view, right? <clears throat> Well, Kala Chakra is a, um, the last, sometimes we'd say the last um, major tantra to be practiced in India. Um, but uh, from a trans historical period, uh, uh, we say, of course, the Buddha taught the Kala Chakra um, in the form of Kala Chakra, either uh, some people say, um, shortly after his awakening or even shortly before uh, his death uh, in southern India. So um, which one do you prefer? <laughs> uh, but in any case, um, didn't really uh, enter uh, you know, conventional time and space um, until uh, later and uh, it became very, very popular. <clears throat> but it's a little different than the other tantras. Um, uh, main tantra uh, that's uh, studied, uh, you know, Dalai Lama studies or Gandhi school, um, Guru Samaja, Main Tantra, Main Style, Guru Garva, um, Main Tantra, um, Shaka School, the Kabaja or something. They, they mainly talk about like a little bit um, clear light and a loser body, right? <clears throat> the Kala Chakra, however, um, says, uh, Immutable bliss and uh, empty form body. So, um, are, are they saying the same thing or are they saying something different? Or is there going to be a different experience? Um, <clears throat> you say, okay. <laughs> attained uh, clear light and illusory body. Now I have to attain immutable bliss and empty form. <laughs> you know, like, <clears throat> so these are questions um, that uh, you should be asking Jadarimshi, right? <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> Uh, and it's true for any of the practices um, uh, going up the same mountain or are they going up different paths or you having the same summit, the same experience. <clears throat> I think when people have a lot of leisure time, then we can uh, contemplate this, right? <clears throat> but um, we don't have a lot of leisure time uh, right now, so uh, we, we want to know like what is what is the fastest path. <laughs> Generally, I would say the fastest path is the one you actually do, of course. <laughs> so, speaker, <clears throat> the Kala Chakra has um, some special uh, meaning that may help us uh, with the fastest path. Are we doing like enough sound in the back? Can't hear? Get closer. Get closer. We need to be closer.
So in, in a lot of the, um, most of the tantras, most of the practices we do, there's um, still some understanding that there's like a, a material base. But there's some materiality out there. I hear a little ring, is that, is there a ring? Yeah, to make it go up, I'm getting feedback. So that's what I'm trying to balance. Ah, uh, okay. Good. It, it, Maybe it doesn't need to be. <laughs> that might help, no? <clears throat> So it's um, it's okay to like adjust things, you know. That's kind of the uh, message I want to get over today. So like we, we have a sitting posture, and after um, ten minutes, our our body is going to be different than it was when we first started, right? We might have to adjust, and then um, the side and my hearing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's why generally, um, uh, I don't know who sets up the altar or this other um, lecture table, but you'll see that teachers usually have the tea off to the side. That makes sense, right? I think it's better. Now it's better. Not too much feedback. Was it just adjusting the microphone here? So even when Dada Rimshi is here, we, we want to um, be able to adjust a little bit and know that's what to do. So we can play with it. <coughs> Oh, and uh, some of the um, romantic uh, grail legend poems from Europe is you know, the story of Galahad looking for the grail, right? The first time Galahad, I guess, sees the grail, but does it? Does it Say anything, right? That's our initial kind of. We're shocked a little bit, stunned. But uh, eventually, Galahad is able to um, say to the Fisher King or ask what, what's going on with you. What else you what? What's your experience, right? So that's uh, entrance into real color chakras that we're able to not just be frozen, but um, be able to say, oh, okay, you need to adjust the sound. Oh, kind of feeling. <laughs> so, like that. Um, without um, uh, losing it, you know, so. <clears throat> For me, it has something to do with the empty form we're talking about. So, we were saying empty, um, it doesn't mean like blank or, or not existent, right? When you say emptiness, um, what's that short for? That should be shorthand for, for what term? So, I guess that's the answer. Correct answer, interdependence. <clears throat> so, um, so when I hear empty form, I hear interdependent form. 
Um, one of the things we always talk about a lot in California is, is traffic <laughs> and parking. Um, so I think of interdependent form as like um, the middle line, um, main line, you know, on the roads. <clears throat> to create a sense of cooperation and um, flexibility and flow, right? So anything that the middle line that road is that then um, people can drive north and south on the road at the same time. I mean it's kind of a, an ingenious thing, right? Yeah. That sounds kind of trivial, but probably Old roads, Roman roads, or old roads, dirt roads. I mean, there was no line in the road, right? In India, there still aren't a lot of lines and roads. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's the experience of like honking. I mean, there is a sense from the British that you're driving on the left hand side. Like if, if there's no line, then practically in India, um, as people know that I've like, been there, um, been in cars, like it's called like head-on collision, honk and swerve. Everybody I've talked to is, is uh, I never drove in India. I was always driven. I mean, I'd be more there to drive. But it's almost like I, I, everyone I've talked to said they've had the experience of like I'm just going to die right now. <laughs> 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 so um, that, that's that's one way of. Doing things, you know, um, we'll just kind of wait until something happens and then um, it can swerve. Um, uh, another sophisticated way of doing things is that somebody will, at some point, maybe it was only after payrolls and paying or something, they said, We're going to draw a line. Um, they, you know, stay the side of line. Does, does anybody know, like, when? When did the lines and roads first appear? It sounds trivial, but you know, it's, it's huge, right? It's huge. So, we know, just we should know, even without meeting with this logic, Dr. Kirti, Big Naga, or anybody without the, um, you know, left and right or relative parents, right? Uh, a line, a line down the center of the road is also somewhat um, computed, right? It's doesn't exist in hand, but it's read. Um, I think of Charlotte has her hand up. Um, let me say a few more things. Um, and go to video land, right? I can't hear anything very well. It's very garbled. So, <clears throat> we'll, we'll work on it. Important feedback. 
might have to send out in front of uh, anybody that's home. You might have to send out and send out like for a call check, or you might have to say, um, you know, this is a special way you have to tune in. I, I don't know. You know, maybe you're thinking um, to go to the side. But right now, I'm getting lots of little pop ups saying it sounded ready. So I'm aware of that. I appreciate it. Um, you know. Also, is to hear from like South Africa. <laughs> okay, so the the line is kind of muddy <laughs> on the road. It's dark in those street lines. So <clears throat> the fact that we're willing to deal with form and see form as interdependent allows the energy to flow and people who work together are harmonious. You know, working to each other. <clears throat> so. Uh, there is a sense, of course, uh, when you say empty form, that uh, you could say it's like an illusion too, right? So when you say illusory, um, the illusory body uh, can have different meanings. You know, like um, sometimes when we say illusory, we mean uh, we're not seeing it correctly. We're not seeing it correctly. We're seeing it see things as out there, out there, out there. So that's like a magician's show, right? But uh, sometimes we need to be careful like that. Or um, like um, mirror appearance, like a rainbow. It's in the mirror, right? <clears throat> oh, wait, it's, it's kind of positive. So, so um, there's ways that if we're practicing um, those kind of uh, kind of styles, we appreciate. Oh, there's something to be said for when that's going to play with. Question answer period. I think one more time. Somebody will have to raise their hand. She's the only one to ask us. So, with, with, uh, there's not a lot of time, you know. With, when she comes you know, to ask questions, probably so. Um, you know, uh, you, you want to go and ask really. Maybe that's not a profound question. I don't know. Some people might think um, it's okay to practice Palo Chakra, but I still don't like people. You know, whatever. You know, you have to love everybody to practice Palo Chakra. You know, whatever. You know, people have lots of personal questions. But, um, well, maybe that's my question, not your question. <laughs> but my desire here is for people to be actually um, to move into doing some actual um, chakra training and um, to be able to um, go to some retreat. And I'm just working on finishing. Uh, College on her property that when we take their time with the um, some of the teachings like today, these are just broad, right? You know, people have to um, go to our own mind stream and then work for themselves. Jaynam's permission lesson uh, ceremonies, the long empowerment is kind of like engagement and marriage ceremonies, right? Um, that's not where the major work is done, right? 
<laughs> so let's take some questions from um, <coughs> audience about uh, anything um, can visit our sound system. Could you use the microphone, please? Uh, you have to use the microphone. I was going to ask about like uh, volunteer opportunities, or do you have like a list of things that you know, yeah, you know, that there's need for? I have to ask. Yeah, let me say a little bit about our server. Everybody uh, contributes to the envelope. Everybody contributes to our um, creating some safe and interesting. Um, Um, I, I think what you said is pretty much saying it all. Um, I just, just uh, made a list from a previous event, so I didn't come up with it on my own, just things that have been done in the past. I relied on the expertise of people like uh, Susan, Susan Farrar, for example. And so um, I'm going to be contacting you, or Turuko potentially will be contacting you this week, and then give you choices of things that we're doing. And what, and I'd like you to have your own input as well, so that'll be coming this week. Thank you, Paul. So even though I'm using like um, uh, the line, um, um, uh, specifically talking like about Mahabudra, um, because Mahabudra, of course, in Kal Chakra. So too, like um, we're talking about uh, a little bit more like the metaphor of the line. So there, there are no lines in the space, right? <laughs> but, no, one person has a pilot license to do this audience, right? <laughs> so what what are the roles in flying? Right? What are the roles in flying? So, I mean, Run into someone else. But trust is everyone to follow the patterns that are set out. What are the patterns? They're um you, 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 you need a you need a desk. Oh. So what what I need to do, like what we need is a volunteer person that is the microphone person. So they figure out when someone's talking, I need to put it down. We we don't know what's happening now to that person back then. So say again. No, I was just going to say everyone has to trust everyone completely because they'll be heading. There's headings, you know, certain degrees west, east, north. There's also um, heights that you have to maintain a certain um, amount, you know, above the ground. And so we have to just really trust in everybody. It's an extremely cooperative and uh, kind of thing. And of course, then there's punishment for those who don't. But. <laughs> That's the fun part. <laughs> but I, I think it's it's the idea of you really have to have faith and a person has to really hold to their their word. And that's what we do. But there are designated, um, you know, patterns laid out. Yeah. So I, I'm just been given like another microphone, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Yeah. 
it's a uh, routine yeah. service. So I, I have this on and this at the same time. Is that what we want? Turn it down the other way. You're turning it down, you want me to turn it off? Turn it off. Okay. So uh, I'm trying to train everybody in form. So we're very uh, like the road. So we're very specific. Like, okay, turn this down, turn this oh. off, right? Do this, do that. Yeah. Now you can't hear. <laughs> So when you're adjusting, you want to turn the mic off so it doesn't have that sound, right? How's this? Peter, how's that? Is that the hand thing? No, 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 no. We don't want to be moving that one around. So let's just try this, this one. This Thank one? You. That's the non move. So, so the sky-like nature, um, and uh, you know the spaciousness aspect, you see, because there's no way to like with just the lines. There's no way with you know just technique to uh, get everything right. It takes a lot of like flexibility, right? Openness. There's no way, you know, like actually reality is very spontaneous, right? It's very open. So many possibilities. So um, you can't always say, well, just obey the lines and do it. We also have to use that uh, totally open awareness at the same time, right? That kind of aspect of sky power. So you have to be like, maybe go down the runway <laughs> and then also good in the sky. There are rules in the sky too, but they're, it's very flexible, right? So, like right now, you, know, you have to be very specific about uh, tinkering, um, very direct about audio, but then you have to show a lot of patience, right? Okay, you know, we just go in with the sound. It's okay, we're testing that. It's very spacious, right? That's sky like nature, right? Boundaries like roads, but we still have a place to have <laughs> So let's get, let's see, get a question from someone remotely, and then we'll see how that's working, right? Anybody remotely can't tell. Well, we have the sound now, Lama. Is that the main question? <laughs> um, what do you call when you get the sound right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> That's called that bliss. <laughs> it's a mutable bliss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, do you think I could ask Dirk a question? Was yeah, we can get Dirk. Are you, are yeah, his, his, his yeah. Dirk, um, are you coming to California? I just had a question. I saw you raise your hand earlier. Yes, I am. Can you no. not hear me? It's on here. So, is there a way? Where'd that come from? It sounds like it's a feedback from me. Like when someone doesn't have, you can't hear them to let them know. Is there like answer no? This is on our side. <coughs> this microphone is on because it's on this microphone. But but it's the issues on our side. The issue is on our side. <laughs> Can you hear me now? What happened? One two three. I don't know. Connor said he could hear me, but you couldn't. So this is really important. So like, yeah, like Greg is saying, like we haven't heard a single thing, like that's information, right? So we need to be interdependent here because Connor may have a certain difference than from our side or my side. So there's audience, there's kind of 
control booth with me. Uh, so we all have to like alert each other, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I try to uh, alert the administrator directly rather than put it in the general chat. Yeah. So just because that creates less uh, confusion around what's going on, and those are the people who are working on it. But okay. your your voice got bad after the mic was changed. Uh, okay. But not immediately. It was just shortly after they went from the one spot to the second spot. I mean, so the, the lapel thing. Changed. Yeah, from, from the lapel to the robe. That's when it, it was at that time. I'm not saying that was the cause, but that's uh, when it happened. Every change. It's better for us in the room, so I don't know what to say about that. Okay. There's room for us in the room, right? I think so. See, I can't tell. The way I'm not in the room, you know. Yeah, I wasn't saying it was the cause, only that there was a correlation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, correlation is not cause. We learned in philosophy. So, like, yeah, there's a question on the floor. That was being asked to start from the person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I answered, but I guess you didn't hear. Yes, I'm coming in person. Yay! Okay. You got a response. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if there's one more person remotely. I, I don't even know how many people are remote. Maybe 21, this little number. 27? Just says 21 on my. 19, actually, because three are admin. Oh, okay. So 21 minus three is 19. Yeah, I didn't say anything about that. I didn't want to embarrass him. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. <laughs> this is probably the way we're going to have to do it with generation because uh, we can work on refining it much more. But I think without uh, everybody participating, without having some people anyway saying, hey, no one can hear anything in your audience, or hey, hear anything remote. You, you need some, some you know, remote people that are out there in remote land to get our attention, right? We need to assign somebody. Yeah. Maybe, can you speak to that, please? Yeah. That does happen, and when that happens, it's worked on. All right, we we start working on that immediately, yeah. but that means that we're also trying to work on it so that it doesn't become an issue, and see so if we can fix that issue before we have to interrupt uh, anything. Okay. So we see those comments and we work on them. We're trying not okay. to interrupt everything. So it, it's not that comments go unheard or unseen or unacknowledged. Yeah. We're just trying not to make an issue out of it. Uh to see if we can fix it without actually interrupting the talk and the teachings right, right, right. and everyone else in their learning process. Right. So we do do that. Yeah, and right. we just don't want to actually interrupt everything. So that's actually what we're trying to do. And what right. I've asked the rest of the tech people to do is to try to see if you can solve the problem before you interrupt something. So that's probably my fault for saying don't interrupt everything. Don't say, don't stop people and don't stop the teacher and say, Hey, people can't hear. Yeah, We're going to yeah. work on it. Um, right. So that's probably my fault. And I apologize if that's what you would like. We'll start doing that. But, you know, that means for anyone who can't hear, then um, even if that's issues on their end, that, you know, that is going to start being a thing that possibly for every talk that there is, there's an issue like that. And sometimes it's not actually on our end. Sometimes it is on someone else's end. Right. And sometimes it's an easy fix. Right, right, right. And I don't want to interrupt teaching and learning process. So that was a decision that I made, and I'm sorry that I did yeah. that. And uh, we'll interrupt everything if that's what you'd like us to do. A little, um, uh, sometimes it might be good to have, even during the, you know, somebody actually in the audience that might be very quiet, you know, that just goes up like we did, we get that, you know. So there's, um, you know, some redundancy built in, right? 
So even though I know you're on it, you know, like a little bit of redundancy sometimes. You know, somebody... uh, yeah, I would actually say that that's more frustrating because when we're trying to concentrate on a problem to fix it, and then we're working on it, and then someone else comes up to us and says, hey, did you see that problem? Then that yeah. stops the flow of trying to problem solve. So it actually is more frustrating and more challenging for us to work on the issues. So it, it's, I know that there's a fine balance and that we do want interdependence, but um, sometimes that actually makes us more nervous and more difficult to solve the problem. But. Although sometimes I think, uh, in my experience with online and the live sessions, is that online often just simply doesn't participate. So if you if you're if we're going to have uh, say a thousand people online, that would mean that for the majority of Lama's talk just now that they really didn't weren't able to follow the talk. So it might be better to interrupt and do a workaround like we finally did is all. I mean, I understand how difficult it is to work tech live. It's impossible, but interrupting might be the thing to just interrupt momentarily for that. Of course, if it's just one person, that's different. Can I throw in a, uh, uh, another uh, piece of criteria? Who's going to be translating, Venerable Steve or Geshitashi? Uh, it would probably be Geshitashi. Well, there's not going to be a lot of interrupting there, I would think, right? Uh, well, that might be challenging. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that that's that's just another piece of information that, that um, because he, he does get on a roll. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, one model I'm working at is um, that I work at a lot is a dialogue model. So, uh, you know, kind of uh, I think it's like Lama, but I also think like therapist a lot. So, therapist model is kind of like dialogue. So. Uh, Every once in a while, it's good to kind of pause and go, How, um, let's, let's do a meta process, what's happening in the room right now. A lot of times people get on the one track, like you know, we're just going down the road, going deep into whatever our step is. And then sometimes we have to like, you know, step back you know, and go, what, what's going on in the session right now? Are we in sync, you know, because people get out of sync with each other. And sometimes, you know, an experienced therapist, they just plow ahead, you know, and then and afterwards go, well, that was a lot. But sometimes you just have to kind of stop and go, hey, it looks like we were just disconnected there, or, you know, we started talking about this and you know, what, what happened there. So it's called your processing the, the session, it's going to kind of a meta session or something. So I guess with Dada Rumshe and, and some of the problems we have, I guess I'm thinking from the model of you know, I, I can talk to him and get she talk she had time and say, you know, it might be helpful like 10 minutes in or half an hour in to just check, right? So it doesn't have to look like a complete flow, you know? It can kind of like, okay, let's check. And, and, and go here, you know, like, is everyone getting it? And so you're, you're making the, um, the workings, uh, Backside of the bouquet, I call it a little bit transparent. So it doesn't, you don't have to have the presumption of seamlessness, right? So it's a little bit transparent. So, you know, there's just like a, say that, you know, like, no, let's, let's pause after 15 minutes and let's pause after a half an hour and see if we need to do a correct, just idea like that. So, um, JD does have a, a question, but there is actually a presumption of seamlessness from the group. And I'm going to say that as the tech, yeah. because when I'm trying to work on an issue like we had today, and people are passing the mics around for questions, and there's an online question, there's a presumption that the right mic will be up at the right level at the right time. Yeah. And that's really hard. If you guys listen to the feedback right now that we have on the speakers, 
that's because all the mics are on right now. And then I get comments about, oh, there's so much feedback on from the speakers. Well, that's because all the mics are on so that all of you can talk at the right time that you want right. to. But, you know, to be able to do that and to listen to the prayers and to move the prayers around at the same rate as the people who are speaking and to handle the comments and to ask questions about what people are hearing or not hearing, that's a lot. I mean, that that's actually overwhelming a lot. Right. And then the tech isn't getting any of the, the teachings. Right. So, you know, having that presumption that we're not seamless is not a presumption that I think anyone really actually has. And that's a, a, a big frustration. So yeah, so let's change that, you see, but, because we're not we're not uh, we're not ad, we're not advaitive Vedantins. So we're not being I mean is like the you know, uh, Dharma like the Buddha like woke up to like oh things pulsate, right? So I don't have a presumption of seamlessness, right? So we can have those kind of like course corrections go on, you know, like when we're flying or when we're driving, we're always kind of little bit correction. But it also sounds like Connor needs help. He can't do all of it. He needs an assistant. Yeah. They're, they're, hi, Harriet. Hi. <laughs> yeah, so things are breaking in. Yeah, so there, there always needs to be more than maybe three people on the board. So what do you think? I'd be willing to help. With your with any like A V stuff. I'm pretty good at that stuff. Are you? Good. So talk talk to Connor and talk to um, Okay. And then Dana has comment. And Michael too. Michael and, and Elizabeth Zima too. <laughs> oh, I'm here. I'm willing to help. Okay, I don't know if everyone knows you, so I'll tell people your name. What's that? I don't think everybody knows you here, so you have. Oh, to... hi. Hi, I'm I'm Lacey, and um, I uh, was helping doing some of the gardening outside. Yeah, then... I know who you are, but because you little would have the same haircut that Matthew does. No. It, my the other half of my head is not shaved. We do not have the same haircut. <laughs> Mine is much cooler. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. <laughs> so so much like like how chakra the tantra I want to say immutable this is a sense of humor. I don't know if it's JD that was with us. So, so JD and then, then I lost I lost track of like who's a lot. Um then I'm happy. So she comes on and then she disappears from me, but you know. Like well, go ahead. Oh I was just gonna um suggest that maybe um I was trying to think of a way to be a little bit more less intrusive is to Connor's point. And sometimes in meetings, there are um, kind of online moderators and it does require a little bit of a sacrifice, but that that could be the point person to corral online comments and then funnel them to tech. And so that there's a kind of, so, so online feels like they're heard and then it gets channeled to tech kind of privately or quietly. So then tech can do their behind the scenes magic and then, but, but there's a sense of communication. So then the moderator comes back and says, thanks, and we're on it. And so there's a less panic, at least something like that. Good idea. Personally, I, I like this kind of interchange. You know, Zima's waving. He's waving. I understand that the sound system is a pinch point and piss it, pisses everybody off. I'm personally very tired of the whole thing. But I want to recount an experience that I had this summer with the Kala Chakra Empowerment with several thousand people online. 
and a, a, a big storm in Australia going on at the same time they're broadcasting, mm. plus they're broadcasting and translating yeah, yeah. at the same time. The sound was not good all the time. Right. There was a storm and the whole thing went offline. Right. Um, there was all sorts of stuff going on and it worked. It, it didn't bother me. I didn't miss anything. It mm -hmm. worked. It was not a tragic thing and it could have been a pinch point, but it didn't bother me. Mm. So uh, there are ways to do this and just keep going. Yeah. Spaciousness. Thank you. Roberta has her hand up here. I just have a question about if there's um, at the empowerment, um, thousands of people in La La Land and people here, and people have questions. Is there no? There could potentially be way more questions than time to answer them. Is there a process by which questions will be taken or such, or just the floodgates open? Uh, you know, these are um, things that I and I'm going over with Jada and Shay when I see him. You know, of course, this is like, uh, you know, driving into the jungle or something, you know, like the road's given out and then, you know, I mean, you know, so it's a brand new situation, right? Brand new situation. So, um, like, you, you know, generally during a, you know, a ceremony, there's not going to be questions, right? But maybe Friday night, the one room teachings, or maybe another time it would be. So, you know, there could be a possibility of like during the public time, Friday night or Saturday or another time, like there's no questions. Generally, in, uh, you know, in Asia, no questions. No one asks any questions. You ask them later, right? You know, um, but that, you know, he might be open to something like that. I don't know. Well, I, I'm just mentioning it in the context of the whole, you know, Audiovisual system and yeah. overwhelming, you know, with so many things to yeah. do. That's the only reason. Yeah, I, I don't have the answer right away. It's a good question. How, how we handle that? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, um, a little bit, you know, when uh, there's so many teachings in Vajrayana, right, and particularly in Indian and Tibetan Buddhism, uh, this, this, the people go into a lot of detail, right? Yeah. Um, so there's kind of a presumption like we should you know, have an explanation for everything. But, uh, I've also done a lot of Zen training uh, in Zen monastery. Sasaki Roshi, who passed away a few years ago at 104, right? So, um, or if I had done some study uh, with Trump and Shade before I did my first seven day coaching. Uh, so I know it's a little bit about meditation, but, um, uh, you know, I asked the head monk, uh, what are the meditation instructions? What do you think they had mindset? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, just sit there and then Roshi will give you, uh, the second day Roshi will give you a come up. No instruction. Other than, you know, just how to do it, you know, like, and then uh, I don't think anybody here has done a in practice. And you're given the con like, which makes absolutely no logical sense. That's your meditation. No, no, no breathing thing, no tongue len, no, you know, like here's what you do with your wings and your channels and drops. Nothing. You know, just like you know, complete don't know mind, right? 
So, um, unfortunately, you know, I studied a number of years with Trent Roche, and it's really used to spontaneity, right? It's really used to like, okay, we're doing this now. Or, like, someone's holding something up, so I don't know if that's doing something. So, Zoom question. I uh, don't know what that means. There's a, yeah. Lacey has a question on Zoom. Oh. Oh, it, sorry. I, no, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I was, I kind of went off in a little like um, dream world thing where <laughs> it was like, you guys should um, monetize the questions. So if people have questions like, like, like YouTube does, and then like, you know, $5, like bump sure question up <laughs> just like <laughs> I just want to say like I I realize I have a much higher tolerance than most people for you know uh, just you know jumping into outer space right um, don't know my without losing my ground or my direction Uh, I do want people to really do genuine dharma, which means like um, you have to rely totally on your, you know, primordial awareness. When you step into real space, there are no rules, there are no signs, right? The signlessness of the sh there's no signs. So it's, you know, from metaphor like go dark. So there's a, some presumption, you know, like we know exactly, you know, what happens, and then we we'll just follow the rules, and then we get in line or something like that. Um, but uh, that that's kind of like not true. It doesn't work that way. So um, even traditional um, Tibetan style is um, it's more like. A little bit like, you know, you get one of those thousand piece puzzles. So you, you, you do kind of get the uh, cover, you know, you see what the puzzle is about, right? Um, but there's still like, it's, you know, when you open the box, they're still all kind of, uh, you know, tossed, right? So there is, there's, there's an overview, you know, like that. But then, then everything has these little puzzle pieces, and then you have to kind of pay attention intuitively to how they fit together. It's not like sequential. It's not like one, you know, like that. Start with the corners. You do start with the corners, yeah. So, yeah, there is some, there is some structure, yeah. So there are some basics, yeah. There are some basics. So. Yeah, or no truths, you know. So it, it's not totally like you're not like thrown into the deep end without, you know. So, so, but you know, there, there's that that mixture. You're you're given some overview, and then you're given this idea like this this thing has some corners, but you know, you still have to like fit the pieces. So almost time to like. So from my side, as Lama, I, I like to see how, you know, can people combine, uh, you know, good driving habits um, with good flying habits, you know? And then very highly developed people, you can kind of uh, drop them off in the jungle or desert and where there's no signs and, uh, no obvious kinds of things. They just know there's some corners, you know. So that's very rare individuals, you know, that can just kind of like, okay, there's everything, you know, like fresh start. But so I recognize that's difficult, right? And as, uh, my teacher used to say, that's being up on the cross, right? You know, so even he used to say, even Jesus said, why have you at the end of so um, those people that have done any depth therapy or any real depth drama, 
and lets you deal with your abandonment issues, you're still a beginner. You're still a beginner. So you have to go through the abandonment or don't know what's going on. How do you come out the other side? That's what makes it so interesting. <laughs> so this has been really helpful. I, I hope we establish some, you know, uh, things like that, you know. So um, Mama, could I bring up a question? Ah, uh, very good. Uh, there, there's, there are a couple of people who may wish to remain anonymous, I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. who were uh, uh, bothered by your uh, haircut comment. I'm, I just lost your... He, he hit mute. Oh, I'm sorry. One of them seems to uh, possibly because a uh, transgender issue or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, what, what, why it made the person uncomfortable, but there was some discussion about it um, by people who are new to our Sangha. So I thought maybe you would address it. I'll probably just get myself more in trouble. Uh, so uh, I certainly, you know, uh, don't wish to offend, you know, so like that. But, um, I have to be a little bit um, um, remembering uh, what Trump Firm Shea said once, which is the function of the is to insult you. So um, I know it, uh, I, I don't mean to offend um, unconsciously, but uh, in the words of Oscar Wilde, um, uh, you know, a gentleman never insults someone unintentionally. <laughs> so I've been unintentional. So in the future, I'll try to be more intentional with that. Want to insult? But uh, uh, you know, since I know Lacey and, and Matthew has took some liberty to tease him a little bit, you know, like that, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know. Connor will find out at the monastery, which is, um, you know, it's one of the functions of living in communities. We'll, we'll get teeth a little bit. So I hope I didn't offend that. I feel fine. <laughs> Not offended but, at all. You can enough. tease me about my haircut. <laughs> Jotro Ripache used to say, he'd go, it wasn't me, it was somebody else who had a shaved head, but he would go. Yeah. Oh, now I'm enlightened. I have a shaved head. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We're almost out of time. Let's see. Any last minute comments, complaints, or corrections? <laughs> Dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful Chinresic, Tensin Gyatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losong Dogpa, I make request at your holy feet. Thank you, everyone in the tech booth.
Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama. Oh, Around. <laughs> <laughs> 